In the coastal town of Eldermist, where towering cliffs met the vast expanse of the Atlantic Ocean, the Valerian research team, led by the renowned marine biologist Draven Valerian, embarked on a journey that would unfold into a chilling incident during the summer of 1989. Draven, characterized by his salt and pepper beard and piercing azure eyes, was accompanied by his dedicated colleagues, Dr. Leo Cadia Stella Nova and Dr. Alistair Nightshade. Seeking a respite from the hustle of city life, the team embraced the picturesque landscape, choosing a cliffside residence that offered both sanctuary and an inadvertent stage for a tragic event that would transcend the boundaries of man and nature. On a warm July morning, the Valerian research vessel set sail into the heart of the great white shark migration route, where the predators roamed in their untamed glory. With a curious glint in his eyes, Draven meticulously collected data while peering over the edge of the research vessel. Unbeknownst to them, a massive great white shark circled the vessel with relentless precision, its predatory instincts heightened by the scent of human presence in the water. As the colossal shadow of the great white shark approached, the air turned heavy with tension. Draven, engrossed in his scientific pursuits, remained unaware of the impending danger. His innocent fascination became the focal point of the shark's predatory instincts. The great white shark lunged in a sudden and merciless strike, jaws snapping shut with bone-chilling force. Chaos erupted on the tranquil research vessel as the shark's immense power breached the ocean's surface, violently pulling Draven beneath the waves. Initially paralyzed with shock, his colleagues sprang into action, desperately trying to locate Draven amid the chaos. Unbeknownst to them, Draven, relying on his profound knowledge of marine life, managed to escape the shark's deadly grasp through a combination of quick thinking and resourcefulness. Using a makeshift underwater tool, he freed himself from the predator's jaws, emerging from the water battered and breathless. The great white shark disappeared into the depths, leaving the researchers to grapple with the enormity of their loss. The relentless predator had almost claimed Draven, but he had miraculously survived, a testament to human resilience amid tragedy. Haunted by the specter of that fateful day, Draven's journey took an unexpected turn. No longer solely driven by scientific curiosity, he became a man on a mission to understand and confront the predatory forces that lurked beneath the waves. His research, now fueled by a personal vendetta, took a dark and determined path. Draven, joined by the resilient Dr. Leo Cadia Stella Nova and Dr. Alistair Nightshade, delved deeper into the ocean's wonders in the following years. Together they unraveled a complex web of ecological imbalances, human encroachment, and the relentless pursuit of survival that defined the great white shark's existence. Each revelation pushed them closer to a shocking truth that would redefine their understanding of the natural world. Against the backdrop of Eldermist, a town scarred by tragedy and reluctant to confront the darkness beneath its placid surface, Draven's strained relationships with his colleagues and even himself came to the fore. The untamed forces of nature threatened to consume the very fabric of his being. The researchers embarked on a dangerous expedition to locate and study the elusive great white shark responsible for attacking Draven. The treacherous journey tested their resilience, courage, and the boundaries of human understanding. Deep sea dives, primitive equipment, and heart-stopping encounters with the ocean's apex predator pushed the team to the brink of sanity. Eldermist grappled with the aftermath of tragedy, scientific discovery, and the indomitable spirit of the untamed ocean. Draven, forever scarred by the attack, found solace in the understanding that some wonders were meant to remain untamed. His story echoed through the corridors of time as a testament to the delicate balance between man and nature. As the news of Draven's survival spread, the Valerian research team became a symbol of triumph over adversity. The town of Eldermist, initially reluctant to confront the darkness that lurked beneath its placid surface, began to see the importance of understanding and coexisting with the untamed forces of the ocean. Draven found a new purpose in his research. He became an advocate for marine conservation, tirelessly working to bridge the gap between scientific understanding and public awareness. Dr. Leo Cadia Stella Nova and Dr. Alistair Nightshade stood by his side, their collective journey evolving into a beacon of hope for the delicate balance between man and nature. The Valerian team's continued exploration of Eldermist's marine wonders 
led to groundbreaking discoveries. They uncovered the interconnectedness of marine ecosystems and the delicate dance between predator and prey. The town, scarred by tragedy, now embraced its role in fostering a sustainable coexistence with the untamed ocean that bordered its shores. Their incident had become a legend in Eldermist, passed down through generations as a cautionary tale and a source of inspiration. The delicate balance between scientific curiosity and respect for the wild forces of nature became a guiding principle for future generations of marine biologists and ocean enthusiasts. In the years that followed, Eldermist transformed into a hub of marine research and conservation. The Valerian Marine Research Institute, established in honor of Draven and his team, became a beacon of knowledge and a testament to the resilience of the human spirit in the face of nature's untamed wonders. As the sun set over the cliffs of Eldermist, casting a warm glow on the vast expanse of the Atlantic Ocean, the town stood as a living testament to the delicate harmony achieved between man and nature. Draven's survival, once a tale of tragedy and vengeance, had blossomed into a legacy of understanding, coexistence, and the enduring spirit of exploration. As Claire and George slipped into their snorkeling gear, the turquoise waters of the Australian beach glistened invitingly beneath them. The coral reef hidden beneath the surface was a world of wonder, teeming with a colorful array of life that awaited their discovery. They were no strangers to this underwater world, having explored its depths many times before, but each time held the promise of something new and exciting. With a sense of anticipation, they descended into the water, their fins slicing through the gentle waves. As they drew closer to the reef, the suspenseful feeling grew. The coral formations towered above them, casting eerie shadows on the sand below. As they swam deeper into the reef, the shadows grew longer and the colors more vibrant. Schools of fish darted past them, their scales flashing in the sunlight, while crabs and lobsters scuttled along the ocean floor, hiding among the rocks. Despite their familiarity with these waters, the sense of anticipation remained strong within them. The reef was a world of mystery and magic, and they knew that with each new dive, there was always the possibility of discovering something they had never seen before. But then, without warning, Clara was wrenched from her reverie by a sudden excruciating pain in her leg. She gasped, struggling to keep her balance as she looked down, only to see the cold, dead eyes of a massive bull shark staring back at her. Its razor-sharp teeth sank deep into her flesh, tearing and ripping as it thrashed back and forth. The world around her seemed to blur as the pain coursed through her body. She could feel her heart racing as the blood gushed from her wounds, staining the water around her in a sickening cloud of red. The shark seemed relentless, its grip unyielding, as if determined to drag her down into the abyssal depths. Panic and terror threatened to overwhelm her, but Clara fought to stay conscious, knowing that her only chance of survival was to stay focused, to stay alive. She struggled against the powerful jaws of the beast, her body writhing and convulsing as she fought for every breath, every heartbeat. The world had turned into a nightmare, a surreal and terrifying landscape of pain and terror. As the seconds ticked by, Clara's strength began to fade, and she knew that she was fighting a losing battle. But still, she fought on, determined to survive, to live another day, no matter what the cost. A blood-curdling scream escaped Clara's lips as the jaws of the bull shark clamped down on her leg, its teeth sinking deeper into her flesh with every passing second. The pain was unbearable a searing agony that consumed her entire being. She felt as though she was being torn apart, her body racked with spasms of pain. But even as the shark thrashed around, trying to drag her deeper into the water, Clara felt a strong hand grab her and pull her away. It was George, reacting with lightning speed, his muscles bulging with the effort of hauling her to safety. His grip was iron, his determination unshakable, as he battled against the brute force of the shark. The ocean was in turmoil as the predator and prey battled fiercely in a maelstrom of foam and bubbles. 
The deafening sound of waves crashing was overshadowed by the thrashing of the shark's tail as it relentlessly pursued Clara and George. Clara felt the rough, abrasive texture of the shark's skin scrape against her leg, sending shivers of terror down her spine. The jaws of the monstrous creature clamped down with a force that threatened to break her bones as she felt the warmth of her own blood spilling into the water. As Clara's vision began to blur and her strength started to wane, she thought it was the end. But then she felt George's grip tighten around her and his muscles tensed with a sudden burst of energy. He pulled her away from the jaws of death and they hurtled towards the surface as if escaping from the depths of hell itself. Gasping for air, Claire broke through the surface, her chest heaving as she gulped in a great lungful of salty air. She looked around frantically, expecting to see the shark's fin closing in on them at any moment. But to her relief, there was only the sun-drenched sky and the gentle lapping of waves against the shore. It was a narrow escape, but they had survived. And as they lay on the sand, exhausted and shaken, Clara knew that she owed her life to George's bravery and quick thinking. Clara and George had narrowly escaped with their lives, but the terror of the attack would haunt them forever. From that day on, they never went into the water without a healthy dose of caution, knowing that danger could be lurking just beneath the surface, waiting to strike. In the heart of a landlocked country, an extraordinary story of love, family, and a dream fulfilled unfolded, casting a ray of hope and inspiration that would resonate far beyond borders. Grace Banda and her husband, Joshua, shared a love that had endured for half a century and to commemorate their remarkable journey together. Their children orchestrated a grand surprise that would take them to the country they had long yearned to visit, the United States of America. For Grace and Joshua Banda, the idea of traveling beyond the confines of their homeland was a privilege that had remained elusive for decades. As residents of Zambia, the prospect of exploring foreign shores had always seemed distant. However, their children recognized the significance of their parents' 50th wedding anniversary and saw it as an opportunity to turn this long-held aspiration into a reality. Pooling their resources and love, the couple's four children coordinated a meaningful surprise. With the expenses meticulously planned and borne by the children, Grace and Joshua were presented with an anniversary gift that transcended material offerings. With their children and grandchildren in tow, the Banda set off to the airport, the air tinged with electric energy that mirrored their collective excitement. As the plane wheels left the tarmac, the journey to Uncle Sam's land had officially begun. The skies held promises of new experiences and memories waiting to be made, and the couple's hearts brimmed with anticipation for what lay ahead. Upon arriving in America, their plane touched down in Florida, a gateway to their American adventure. With the aid of a guide, their stay was carefully curated to ensure a memorable experience. Their first day was spent luxuriating in the comfort of a hotel, the beginning of a journey filled with moments of wonder and joy. As evening descended, a towering cake took center stage, symbolizing their enduring love and the years they had shared. The celebration of their golden anniversary was a testament to the strength of their bond. Family, love, and gratitude converged as generations gathered around the cake, a sweet reflection of the unity and joy that defined the Bandus' journey. The adventure didn't stop there. The Bandus embarked on a day of thrilling excitement at an amusement park. The roller coasters, with their heart-pounding drops and exhilarating twists, mirrored the exhilaration that defined their journey. By the end of the day, their spirits were invigorated, and their bodies were weary from the adrenaline-filled experiences. The Bandus returned to their lodgings, their hearts brimming with gratitude for the day's adventures and the love surrounding them. The next day, they went to the pristine beach of Florida. The Banda family descended upon the golden sands of Florida's coastline, with the sea breeze brushing against their skin and the waves crashing in rhythmic harmony. The allure of the beach, with its vast expanse of water meeting the horizon, was irresistible. Grace, a grandmother who had embarked on this adventure with the heart of a child, exchanged her attire for swimwear, 
her spirit a reflection of the boundless enthusiasm that surrounded her. As the younger generations reveled in the waves, Grace joined them with unbridled glee. Together they waded belly deep into the water, their shared laughter harmonizing with the rhythm of the ocean. A symphony of joy unfolded with each splash and each burst of laughter. Grace's heart swelled as she played with her beloved grandchildren, their shared moments forming the foundation of a cherished memory. In an instant, the carefree laughter gave way to a cry that pierced the air. Once the embodiment of joy, Grace was now the center of a drama beyond imagination. The shark's gnash into her feet reverberated through the family, a stark reminder of the delicate balance between humans and the wild. Initially unsure of the seriousness of the situation, her grandchildren rushed towards her. Their innocent faces contorted with concern as they witnessed the distress etched on Grace's features. Their instincts kicked in and they rallied to support their beloved grandmother. With bravery beyond their years, some of the grandchildren attempted to pull Grace from the water while others scrambled to assess the situation. Together with a collective strength fueled by love, they confronted the shark. Grace was freed from its grip. Blood flowed from the bites, a testament to the unexpected visceral encounter. Grace's leg, despite the bites, was miraculously intact. As they emerged from the water, their faces were etched with relief, exhaustion, and pride. With Grace's safety on their minds, the family's immediate response was swift and decisive. The well-being of their matriarch was their top priority, and the beach's other occupants were swiftly evacuated from the water to prevent further harm. The vacation atmosphere was abruptly transformed into an atmosphere of vigilance and concern. The family's initial plans were placed on hold after the incident. Instead of an immediate return to their beloved Zambia, they chose to stay, compelled by the necessity of ensuring Grace received the medical care she needed. Days turned into weeks as Grace underwent medical treatment and her family stood by her side, unwavering in their support. Their vacation may have been disrupted, but the bond that held them together remained unbreakable. The fear that gripped them was transformed into determination, a resolve to overcome the obstacles that had been unexpectedly placed in their path. As Grace's strength slowly returned and her ability to walk improved, the family began to see a glimmer of hope on the horizon. A sense of assurance gradually replaced the shadow of uncertainty that had lingered were moving in the right direction. The decision to return to Zambia, their homeland, became more feasible as they weighed the allure of their homeland's familiar comforts against the uncertainty that had arisen from the incident. Before departing from the hospital, Grace received counseling to address the emotional aftermath of the traumatic experience. The weight of the encounter had left its mark, and the guidance she received was a crucial step towards healing both physically and emotionally. With the support of her family and the guidance of professionals, Grace faced her trauma head-on, emerging from the experience stronger and more resilient than before. Nestled within the Coralina Isles was the lesser-known coastal region of Marlin's Edge. Its untouched beaches and the allure of its underwater mysteries made it a haven for those seeking a unique diving experience. The Harper family, consisting of James, a university professor, Elise, a renowned novelist, their spirited daughter Ava and their younger son Ethan chose Marlin's Edge for their summer getaway. The family had heard tales of the region's underwater caves and vibrant marine life, and were eager to explore its depths. Upon their arrival, they were captivated by the serene beauty of Marlin's Edge. The gentle sound of waves, the pristine sands, and the distant horizon promised an adventure they wouldn't forget. To make the most of their trip, they enlisted the services of Marlin's Dive Adventures, a local dive center known for its expert guides. The day of the dive was picture perfect. The sun illuminated the clear waters, revealing a hint of the wonders below. With their gear checked and spirits high, the Harpers, accompanied by their dive guide Marco and some of the boat crew, began their underwater journey. The marine world of Marlin's Edge was breathtaking. Schools of colorful fish, intricate coral formations, and the play of light created a magical setting. Ava led the group, eager to explore, with Ethan trying to match her enthusiasm. However, the tranquility was soon disrupted. From a distant, shadowy region, a pack of sharks emerged their presence instantly changing the dynamics of the dive. The Harpers found themselves in a precarious situation as the sharks circled, their intent clear. 
A sudden movement from one of the sharks saw it heading straight for Ava. Before anyone could react, it came dangerously close, its teeth grazing her leg. A sense of urgency and fear replaced the serene environment. Drawing upon his experience, Marco signaled the group to form a tight cluster. Protective instincts kicking in, James and Elise moved closer to their children, ensuring they remained together. Thinking quickly, Marco reached into his diving belt and retrieved a small canister of shark repellent spray. He was well aware that when released, the cloud of repellent emitted a signal of danger to any sharks in the vicinity, suggesting the possible presence of a predator. This action created a temporary safety zone around them. Using this brief window, the group began their ascent, each moment filled with tension as they hoped to reach the safety of the surface without any further encounters. The ascent to the surface felt like the longest journey the Harpers had ever undertaken. Ava felt the sting from the gash on her leg with each upward kick, a constant reminder of the close encounter. The once clear waters of Marlin's Edge now seemed murky, clouded by fear and uncertainty. The underwater world around them gradually gave way to the shimmering surface as they continued their slow ascent. The family's hearts raced with a mix of relief and anxiety, knowing that their journey wasn't over yet. Marco's decision to use the shark repellent spray had created a temporary buffer, but it was unclear whether the sharks had truly been deterred or if they were lurking nearby. The boat's crew had been watching the situation closely, and they hurriedly extended a ladder into the water to aid their ascent. James, Elise, and Marco helped the children climb the ladder first, ensuring they reached the safety of the boat's deck. Ava, nursing her leg wound, was the last to ascend her eyes darting nervously between the water and the boat. Once they were all safely aboard, the boat's crew members quickly assessed the situation. They had encountered a school of curious but ultimately cautious sharks, and the repellent had done its job in creating a temporary safe zone. The family received immediate medical attention for Ava's leg wound, which fortunately appeared to be minor. As they motored back to the shore, the family exchanged relieved smiles and solemn reflections. They had experienced a close call with the ocean's apex predators and had emerged from the encounter shaken but unharmed. Marco's quick thinking and the teamwork of the boat's crew had been instrumental in their survival. They debriefed on the shore with the local marine experts who stressed the importance of respecting the ocean's inhabitants and practicing responsible diving. The Harpers had learned a valuable lesson about the unpredictable nature of the sea and the importance of being prepared and knowledgeable when exploring its depths. The next day, the Harpers decided to cut their trip short, but not before making a generous donation to Marlin's Dive Adventures for shark conservation and research. They realized that the ocean, with all its beauty, also held dangers, and understanding these magnificent creatures was the key to coexisting. As they boarded the plane, leaving behind the Coralina Isles and the memories of Marlin's Edge, they carried a story of survival, unity, and the indomitable human spirit. The experience would stay with them as a reminder of the delicate balance of nature and the need to approach the ocean with both awe and caution. Bali, Indonesia is a tropical paradise known for its lush landscapes, intricate temples, and the azure waters of Uluwatu. This coastal gem is not just a haven for those seeking spiritual solace, but also for adrenaline junkies chasing the thrill of the waves and the mysteries of the deep. Sarah Mitchell, a spirited traveler from Texas, had always been drawn to the ocean. With her sun-kissed skin, a hint of freckles, and a fiery determination in her eyes, she arrived in Uluwatu with one goal, to free dive into its renowned underwater caves. Having heard tales of mesmerizing marine life and hidden underwater caverns, she was eager to explore. On a bright morning, with the sun casting shimmering reflections on the water, Sarah, accompanied by Wyan, a seasoned local diver, set out on their aquatic adventure. The boat ride to the diving spot was filled with anticipation. The deeper waters beckoned, and soon they were gearing up for the dive. The world beneath was a spectacle. Neon-colored fish darted around and the play of light through the water painted everything in a surreal glow. With Wyan leading the way, Sarah ventured deeper, drawn to a cave entrance that promised further wonders. Inside the cave, the light dimmed, and the surroundings took on a mystical quality. Stalactites hung like ancient chandeliers, 
and the silence was profound. But as they ventured further, a sudden shift in the water's current signaled that they weren't alone. From the shadows emerged a tiger shark, its stripes making it all the more menacing in the dim light. Its size was formidable, and its intent clear. Sarah's heart raced as the shark, sensing potential prey, began its approach. Realizing the gravity of the situation, Wyan tried to position himself between Sarah and the shark, signaling her to retreat slowly. But the shark was swift. In a flash, it lunged, its jaws narrowly missing Wyan but finding Sarah's leg. Though not deep, the bite was enough to draw blood and send waves of pain through her. The sight of blood agitated the shark further. Wayan, thinking quickly, used his flashlight to momentarily blind the creature, giving them a brief window to escape. Holding on to Sarah, who was in shock from the attack, he navigated through the cave's narrow passages, praying they'd find an exit. Emerging from the cave's mouth, they quickly ascended, the threat of the tiger shark still looming large. Reaching the surface, the relief was palpable, but the reality of Sarah's injury quickly set in. Gasping for air, Sarah and Wyan clung to each other, the weight of their harrowing encounter pressing down on them. The boat, anchored a short distance away, became their immediate target. With his arm firmly around Sarah, Wyan helped her navigate the waters, ensuring she kept her injured leg elevated. Once aboard, the gravity of Sarah's injury became evident. Though not life-threatening, the bite was deep enough to need medical attention. With years of experience on the sea, Wyan quickly bandaged the wound to stem the bleeding, reassuring Sarah that they were headed straight to the nearest medical facility. The boat ride back to Uluwatu was tense. Sarah, though in pain, was also grappling with the emotional trauma of the attack. The ocean, which had always been a source of joy and wonder for her, had shown its unpredictable side. Upon reaching the shore, a medical team was already waiting alerted by another boat that had witnessed their hasty retreat from the diving spot. Sarah was swiftly taken to a local clinic where her wound was cleaned, stitched, and dressed. The doctor, familiar with marine injuries, informed her that while the physical wound would heal, she might need time to overcome the psychological impact of the attack. Days turned into weeks. Confined to her lodging, Sarah received a steady stream of visitors, including Wyan, who felt a profound responsibility for her well-being. Their bond, forged in the face of danger, grew stronger. Wyan shared stories of the ocean, its beauty and its perils, helping Sarah process her experience. As her leg healed, Sarah needed to face her fears. With Wyan by her side, she decided to visit the beach, not to dive, but to reconnect with the ocean. Standing at the water's edge, she felt a rush of emotions. The waves, gentle and inviting, seemed to beckon her. With each passing day, Sarah's confidence grew. She began with short swims, always with Wyan accompanying her. The ocean, in its vastness, seemed to understand her journey, offering calm waters and serene surroundings. One morning, as the sun painted the sky in hues of orange and pink, Sarah, standing on the beach, made a decision. She would not let one terrifying encounter define her relationship with the ocean. Determined, she enrolled in a marine conservation program, turning her traumatic experience into a force for good. Her journey in Bali took on a new direction. From being a tourist seeking adventure, she advocated for marine life, understanding that every creature, including the tiger shark, had its place in the ecosystem. As she boarded her flight back to Texas, Sarah looked out at the vast expanse of water below. With its mysteries and might, the ocean had given her a story of resilience, healing, and hope. In the picturesque coastal town of Havens Bay, where towering cliffs met the expansive Pacific, Kevin Gilbert, synonymous with marine exploration, yearned for a respite from the demanding rhythms of his career. With an adventurous spirit that had led him to the far reaches of the ocean, Kevin sought solace in a peaceful vacation. In the summer of 2005, the sun bathed the tranquil waters in its warm glow as Kevin prepared for an expedition aboard his meticulously maintained boat, Neptune's Embrace. The locals, intrigued by his reputation and captivated by the allure of the deep sea, gathered at the harbor to witness the departure. A diverse group of colleagues, friends, and marine enthusiasts watched with a mix of excitement and admiration as Kevin donned his diving gear. The air was thick with anticipation, 
and a collective sense of adventure hung in the coastal breeze. With a promise to return soon, Kevin descended into the abyss, leaving the onlookers with waves of excitement and a shared sense of exploration. As Kevin explored the mesmerizing underwater world, his journey took an unexpected turn when he stumbled upon a hidden underwater cave, its entrance obscured by swaying seaweed. The cave beckoned like an ancient mystery, promising undiscovered wonders that fueled Kevin's curiosity. Oblivious to the potential dangers lurking within the depths, he ventured further into the abyss, his heartbeat echoing in the stillness of the deep. Inside the cavern, Kevin's flashlight painted an ethereal picture of the hidden beauty concealed beneath the ocean's surface. Translucent fish danced in the play of light, and vibrant corals adorned the cave walls like precious jewels. However, the serenity of the underwater sanctuary was abruptly shattered as swift and stealthy shadows moved in the periphery. Unbeknownst to Kevin, the cave served as a sanctuary for a territorial species of sharks that had eluded human discovery for centuries. Sensing an intruder in their sacred domain, the sharks became a swirling mass of predatory instincts. Kevin, now aware of the encroaching danger, attempted to retreat. Yet guided by relentless aggression, the sharks closed in with primal determination. The underwater currents transformed into a chaotic battleground, where the clash of predator and prey reverberated through the cavern's darkened expanse. One particularly massive shark, its eyes reflecting primal instinct, targeted Kevin with ferocious determination. The ensuing battle reached a heart-stopping intensity, the once serene ocean now a theater of survival. Armed solely with his diving knife, Kevin fought desperately against the razor-sharp teeth and powerful tail of the predatory beast. The struggle unfolded in the shadows, a dance between life and death beneath the waves. Above the surface, the local marine authorities, tuned in to Kevin's distress call, launched into action. Expert navigators and skilled rescuers set course for Neptune's embrace, their vessel slicing through the waves with a purpose. Back in the cave, the sharks, disturbed by the presence of intruders, intensified their predatory instincts. The battle between Kevin and the massive shark reached a fever pitch. As the marine authorities neared the scene, with precision and determination, they skillfully intervened, fending off the sharks and rescuing Kevin from the perilous situation. The underwater battleground slowly gave way to the resounding hum of the approaching rescue vessel. Wide-eyed and silent, onlookers clung to the edge of the harbor, their innocence forever marred by the stark reality of the deep sea. In the aftermath, Kevin, battered but alive, was rushed to the nearest hospital for treatment. The incident left an indelible mark on the collective psyche of the community, a haunting reminder of the unforgiving nature that lurked beneath the seemingly tranquil waves. As Kevin recovered, his mind brimmed with newfound determination. A vow to understand the sharks that had almost claimed his life fueled his commitment to marine research. He pledged to unveil the wonders of the underwater world, aspiring to prevent future tragedies and share his harrowing tale with the world. The story of the incident transcended its initial tragedy, evolving into an epic tale of resilience, exploration, and the enduring power of camaraderie. Kevin's dedication resulted in the establishment of the Gilbert Marine Institute, a research hub that attracted top-tier scientists and researchers. Back in Havens Bay, the coastal town that witnessed the incident and the subsequent journey of resilience, the Gilbert Marine Institute became a beacon of knowledge and conservation. Community outreach programs led by Kevin and other passionate advocates educated locals about the importance of sustainable practices and the interconnectedness of marine life. The Institute's research vessel, now known as Neptune's Quest, replaced the aging Neptune's embrace, symbolizing Kevin's ever-expanding commitment to exploration and understanding. The Quest set sail on ambitious expeditions mapping uncharted territories and unveiling new species previously unknown to science. The story of the incident, once a tale of individual survival, had grown into an intricate narrative of resilience, exploration, and the enduring power of shared purpose. Once a victim of the untamed sea, Kevin had become its protector, his legacy imprinted on the pages of marine conservation history. The ocean that once harbored nightmares now stood as a testament to their unwavering commitment. The untamed depths, once a source of fear, 
had transformed into a realm of discovery and understanding, a testament to the indomitable human spirit that dared to venture into the unknown, seeking survival and harmony with the vast untamed world beneath the waves. Randall had always been a daring soul, seeking out the most exhilarating adventures. The thrill of scaling mountains, gliding through the air, and even conquering the world's highest peak had all been accomplished. However, now he yearned for the heart-pounding excitement of undersea exploration. After much research, Randall chose Mossel Bay, a place renowned for its vast population of great white sharks, to try his hand at shark cage diving. The idea of being submerged in a steel cage, teetering precariously on the ocean's surface while the colossal predator swam around, both fascinated and terrified him. It was a once-in-a-lifetime experience that could go one of two ways, an unforgettable thrill or a terrifying disaster. The journey to Mossel Bay was long, but when Randall arrived, he was struck by its immense beauty. The cerulean waters of the ocean shimmered under the sun's rays. The coastline was a picturesque panorama of rocky cliffs and sandy beaches. The tranquil town was small, but it was clear that this place held great power, with the possibility of danger lurking just below the water's surface. Randall's excitement grew as he boarded the boat and set out towards the diving location. The cage was ready and waiting for him, and he couldn't wait to be lowered into the water. As the cage sank into the depths of the ocean, Randall's anticipation turned to fear. The water was murky, and he couldn't see far beyond the steel cage. The silence was deafening, and the only sound was the rhythmic breathing of the diving crew. Suddenly, a group of great white sharks began to circle the cage, their teeth glistening in the murky water as they attacked the steel pegs. Randall could feel his heart pounding in his chest as he watched them, wondering if the cage could withstand their attack. But as the sharks continued to circle, the cage remained sturdy, and Randall felt confident that nothing bad could happen. As the minutes ticked by, the tension grew palpable as the sharks kept circling the cage, their razor-sharp teeth bared in a menacing display. Randall and the crew felt a sense of relief when the sharks eventually stopped attacking the cage, only for their relief to quickly turn to confusion as they suddenly disappeared without a trace. In the murky waters, a thick layer of foam and bubbles made it difficult to see anything. But in the depths, Randall caught a glimpse of something that made his heart race with fear. A massive figure was moving towards the cage with deadly precision. It was coming fast, and there was nowhere to hide. As it approached, the figure became clearer, revealing itself to be a colossal great white shark. Its massive body dwarfed all other sharks they had seen before. Its scarred sides bore the evidence of countless battles, and its cold, dead eyes were fixed on the steel cage with an unerring focus. The crew and Randall watched in terror as the shark kept circling the cage, getting closer and closer with each pass. The atmosphere was thick with fear as they waited for what would happen next. The suspenseful silence was shattered when the shark disappeared suddenly into the depths of the ocean, leaving them all gasping for air. With the sudden appearance of the colossal great white shark, the crew of the diving expedition was thrown into a frenzy of fear and panic. They knew that they had to act quickly to save Randall's life. Without hesitation, they pulled on the rope that would lift the steel cage back to the surface. As they hauled it up, Randall could feel his heart pounding in his chest, and his body was shaking with fear. Just as he was about to breathe a sigh of relief, thinking he had made it out alive, the bottom of the cage was struck by a massive force. It felt like a powerful blow from a sledgehammer, and Randall was thrown off balance, his body jerking wildly in the water. He knew that something terrible was happening, and he could feel his fear growing with each passing moment. The sound of the impact was deafening, and Randall could feel his ears ringing. The water around him churned and frothed, and he knew that something was trying to break through the cage. 
His mind raced as he tried to imagine what kind of monster was capable of such a feat of strength. Randall's mind raced as he frantically scanned the murky waters, desperate to identify the source of the massive collision that had sent him hurtling out of the cage. Dread filled his heart as he suddenly realized that the colossal great white shark they had seen earlier was the culprit. Before he could even think of a way to defend himself, the beast launched itself like a torpedo, its razor-sharp teeth glistening in the water. In one swift and bone-chilling moment, the shark sunk its jaws into Randall's upper torso, tearing it away from his body with a violent snap. The sensation of excruciating pain mixed with utter terror as Randall felt his life slipping away in the jaws of the monstrous predator. The world around Randall seemed to vanish in an instant as he found himself trapped inside the jaws of the great white shark. The darkness was absolute, and the only sound he could hear was the deafening crunch of the shark's razor-sharp teeth slicing through his flesh and bones. The pain was indescribable, as if every inch of his body was being ripped apart by a thousand knives. His ribs were crushed under the pressure of the shark's jaws, and he knew in that moment that he was doomed. As the shark clenched its massive jaws on Randall's body, his lifeless form hung limply in the water, at the mercy of the animal's frenzied movements. With each violent thrash, the water churned with an ominous blend of swirling crimson and murky green. The shark's razor-sharp teeth shredded Randall's flesh, creating a gory, macabre display in the water. The predator's movements were so powerful that it dragged Randall's mangled remains down into the dark, abyssal depths of the ocean, far from the safety of the surface. It was a gruesome and unsettling sight, a grim reminder of the dangers that lurked beneath the waves. The attack was so sudden that the diving crew was not able to react accordingly. Randall's body was never found, and the story of the attack sent fear and terror to the diving community. It was a reminder that nature was unforgiving, and even the bravest and most experienced of thrill-seekers were not immune to its dangers. Maria Otto had spent a lifetime beneath the waves, seeking solace and tranquility in the world beneath the shimmering surface. With an impressive tally of over 400 dives under her belt, this 73-year-old German scuba diver had long forged a unique connection with the marine realm finding comfort and companionship in the company of oceanic creatures. However, on a fateful day in June 1997, her journey into the deep would forever be etched in her memory. For Maria, sharks were more than just apex predators. They were her serene companions beneath the waves. Deeply respecting these majestic creatures, she navigated the waters with awe, confident that sharks were an integral part of the ocean's delicate ecosystem. This understanding guided her through countless dives, allowing her to experience the world beneath the surface with a sense of wonder and connection. However, June 1997 would be a turning point in Maria's relationship with the ocean's most fearsome inhabitants. Traveling to Hawaii, she had a noble mission to share her wealth of experience with a new generation of divers, instructing them on the art and science of diving. The setting was a controlled swimming pool environment where young divers could learn the ropes of scuba diving before venturing into the open ocean. Yet, as she spent her days guiding and teaching, Maria undeniably yearned to embrace the open, natural waters surrounding the beautiful Hawaiian islands. Her heart longed to experience the unfiltered beauty of the ocean, to swim amongst the vibrant coral reefs and the creatures that called them home. And so, when her instruction duties ended, she seized the opportunity to embark on a diving adventure that would soon become unforgettable. Before Maria arrived at the water's edge, a group of adventurous tourists, eager to interact with the ocean's most fearsome residents, embarked on a boat excursion and began feeding sharks. As she ventured into the water with her coach and American acquaintances on board, the excitement of exploration mingled with the serenity of the ocean's embrace. Unbeknownst to her, the waters had been stirred by the reckless actions of the tourists feeding sharks, transforming the tranquil seas into a theater of heightened activity, majestic and fearsome, 
Sharks roamed the depths, their presence a stark reminder of the ocean's raw power. Emerging from a dive and relishing the gentle caress of the waves, Maria's world shifted instantly. The serenity was shattered as a sudden force gripped her leg. Her tranquil swim transformed into a harrowing dance with danger. In that visceral moment, the boundaries between the human realm and the untamed world dissolved, and Maria found herself locked in a battle for survival with a creature that had mistaken her for prey. The crew on board quickly rushed towards her and helped her to free herself from the shark's lethal grip. But it wasn't an easy task. The shark was punched several times in its nose and eyes till it loosened its grip, and Maria was pulled up. Despite the ferocity of the encounter, Maria harbored no resentment toward the shark. She understood that the incident resulted from the shark's instinctive pursuit of sustenance, a case of mistaken identity in the complex dance of survival. Blood stained the water, and fear gripped her heart. Yet beneath it all lay a deep respect for the ocean's inhabitants, acknowledging their rightful place in the ecosystem she had come to love. As the boat's crew administered crucial first aid and the echoes of the incident lingered, first responders rushed her to a hospital. In Hawaii, a place known for its beauty and serenity, the gravity of the situation became evident. The medical team assessed the situation, and a sobering decision was made, amputating her leg. The surgeon expressed concern over potential infections and decided that saving her leg might pose a greater risk to her well-being. Despite the enormity of the decision, Maria faced it with remarkable courage and understanding. She agreed to the amputation, respecting the doctor's expertise and acknowledging that her life's course was irrevocably altered. It was a choice that marked a turning point in her journey, a tangible embodiment of her determination to persevere despite the challenges ahead. In the wake of the life-altering event, a community rallied around Maria, demonstrating the power of compassion and support. A friend initiated a GoFundMe campaign to alleviate the weight of mounting medical expenses. The response was overwhelming, with contributions pouring in from near and far, a testament to Maria's profound impact on those who had crossed paths with her. Beyond her role as a skilled diver and a talented photographer, Maria became a symbol of fearlessness and kindness. Her journey transcended the realms of her underwater exploits, transforming her into a beacon of inspiration for individuals navigating their trials. The incident may have shifted the trajectory of her life, but her spirit remained undaunted, illuminating the path for others to find strength in the face of adversity. In the coastal town of Wavecrest, the pristine Golden Sands Bay was a surfer's dream. Its consistent waves, azure waters, and sun-kissed beaches drew enthusiasts from all corners. The year was 1998, and the Wavecrest Surfing Championship was the most awaited event of the summer. Among the participants was 16-year-old Mia Bennett, a prodigy in the surfing community. Mia epitomized the surfer spirit with her sun-bleached hair, bronze skin, and fearless demeanor. Her family, comprising her parents, Jake and Lila, and her younger brother, Lucas, were her pillars of strength. They had journeyed with her to Wavecrest, setting up camp close to the beach to root for her. The championship's inaugural day was radiant and promising. The beach hummed with anticipation, the scent of the sea permeating the air and the rhythmic sound of waves setting the backdrop. After her preparatory rituals, Mia waxed her surfboard, gearing up for her performance. As she ventured into the waves, onlookers watched with high expectations. Mia's prowess was well known, and many pegged her as the favorite for the crown. Patiently, she awaited the ideal wave, her focus unwavering. When the opportune wave approached, Mia showcased her expertise, pulling off intricate moves that garnered applause from the shore. However, as her performance neared its climax, an unexpected disturbance in the water disrupted her flow. Emerging from the ocean's depths, a group of sharks attracted by the commotion closed in. The audience stared, frozen in disbelief, as the sharks encircled Mia. In a heart-stopping moment, a shark attacked, its jaws seizing Mia's leg. The sheer force toppled her from her board, and the tranquil waters of Golden Sands Bay were tainted with red. Jake and Lila, gripped by terror, could only watch their daughter's ordeal. Lucas, driven by adrenaline, commandeered a nearby jet ski, speeding towards Mia. The jet ski's noise and motion momentarily confused the sharks, granting Lucas a brief chance to rescue Mia. 
With Mia injured but safe on the jet ski, Lucas raced back to land. The gathered crowd recovering from the shock mobilized. Medical teams attended to Mia while others consoled the distraught Bennett family. The championship was promptly suspended and the beach was evacuated. The festive ambiance of Golden Sands Bay had been overshadowed by the day's grim events, underscoring the unpredictability of nature. As first responders whisked Mia to the nearest hospital, the Bennett family united in their concern, their summer in Wavecrest taking an unforeseen and harrowing turn. The days following the shark attack were a whirlwind for the Bennett family. Mia's condition was stabilized, but the trauma of the incident lingered. The town of Wavecrest, known for its close-knit community, rallied around the family, offering support and prayers for Mia's swift recovery. In the hospital, Mia's fighting spirit shone through. The bite on her leg required surgery and intensive physiotherapy. Every day was a battle, but with her family's unconditional love and support and her own determination, Mia made remarkable progress. Lucas in particular spent hours by her side, recounting tales of their childhood adventures and planning future escapades. News of Mia's resilience spread throughout Wavecrest, turning her into a beacon of hope and inspiration. The organizers of the Wavecrest Surfing Championship, recognizing the significance of Mia's journey, decided to reschedule the event in her honor. Two months after the incident, with Mia's leg healed and her spirit unbroken, the championship was announced. The beach was abuzz once more, but the atmosphere was charged with anticipation and respect for Mia's invincible spirit this time. On the day of the competition, Golden Sands Bay was a spectacle of colors and excitement. Flags fluttered in the breeze and the crowd, larger than before, waited with bated breath. The star attraction was Mia donning a custom-made wetsuit that proudly displayed a shark emblem. Her first foray into the waves was met with thunderous applause. Every eye was on Mia as she danced on the waves, her moves fluid and confident. The memory of the attack seemed to fuel her. Each wave conquered a testament to her resilience. As the competition progressed, it became evident that Mia was in her element. Her performance was a blend of skill, grace, and sheer willpower. The other participants, Recognizing the gravity of her journey, displayed sportsmanship of the highest order, cheering her on. The final round was a spectacle in itself. Mia chose the biggest wave, riding it with a finesse that left the audience in awe. As she completed her run, the beach erupted in cheers, and many were moved to tears by her triumphant return. When the results were announced, it was no surprise that Mia Bennett was crowned the champion of the Wavecrest Surfing Championship. The trophy in her hand was not just a symbol of her surfing prowess, but a testament to her journey of recovery and determination. The day culminated in a grand celebration. The Bennett family was at the heart of it, their joy and relief evident. Jake and Lila, overwhelmed with pride, hugged their children, their bond stronger than ever. With a twinkle in his eye, Lucas whispered plans for their next adventure, eliciting a chuckle from Mia. Mia stood at the water's edge as the sun set on Golden Sands Bay, her silhouette against the fiery horizon. Once a source of trauma, the waves now whispered promises of endless adventures. The story of Mia Bennett, the girl who faced down a pack of sharks and emerged victorious, became the stuff of legends in Wavecrest. It was a tale of courage, resilience, and the indomitable human spirit, inspiring generations to come. New Smyrna Beach, Florida, 2005. The pristine coastline was a haven for surfers, sunbathers, and marine enthusiasts. Its reputation as the shark bite capital of the world was a cautionary tale and a badge of honor for the locals. While many tourists were wary of the waters, others were drawn to the thrill of swimming in the same seas as the formidable tiger sharks. Lila Harrison, a travel blogger from San Francisco, was in New Smyrna to experience its famed beaches and, hopefully, catch a glimpse of the tiger sharks that frequented its waters. With her sleek camera and a sense of adventure, she hoped to capture the essence of this unique location. On her second day, Lila booked a snorkeling trip with a renowned local guide, Carlos Mendoza. With years of experience navigating these waters, Carlos was known for his deep respect for marine life and his uncanny ability to spot sharks from a distance. As they set out on Carlos's boat, the Sea Whisperer, 
Lila was excited. The clear blue waters offered a tantalizing glimpse into the world below. Carlos shared stories of his encounters with various marine creatures, emphasizing the importance of understanding and respecting their domain. Hours into their expedition, Dr. Alex Turner, a marine biologist on board, pointed to a disturbance in the water ahead. As the boat approached, the unmistakable silhouette of a tiger shark became visible, its striped body gliding gracefully beneath the waves. Lila, eager to capture this moment, began filming. A curious and unthreatened shark swam closer to the boat, its eyes reflecting the sunlight. Mesmerized by its beauty, Lila decided to snorkel alongside it, wanting to experience the thrill of being close to such a magnificent creature. With snorkel gear on, she gently slid into the water. The world below was a symphony of colors and movement. Sensing her presence, the tiger shark began to circle her, maintaining a cautious distance. Lila, heart pounding, floated still, capturing every moment with her camera. Watching from the boat, Carlos signaled for Lila to remain calm and make no sudden movements. He knew that these creatures, while formidable, were also curious by nature. The key was to show no fear and to move with deliberate intent. As minutes felt like hours, the tiger shark, seemingly satisfied with its assessment of Lila, began to move away, disappearing into the blue abyss. Exhilarated by the encounter, Lila swam back to the boat, her legs trembling from the adrenaline. On the Sea Whisperer, Lila shared her footage with the crew, her voice resonating with excitement and wonder. Carlos, wearing a knowing smile, observed her with interest. As the boat returned to the shore, Lila knew she possessed a story for the ages that spoke of respect, understanding, and the delicate equilibrium between humanity and nature. The sun descended, casting a warm, golden hue across the water. Still processing her incredible encounter, Lila sat on the deck of the Sea Whisperer, her gaze fixed upon the horizon. The moment's tranquility enveloped her, with only the gentle lapping of waves against the boat's hull breaking the silence. Approaching her with two cups of freshly brewed coffee, Carlos engaged her in further conversation, sharing his experiences with tiger sharks. He spoke about the lessons learned from each encounter, emphasizing the importance of understanding these formidable creatures and their unique boundaries. Lila nodded thoughtfully as she took a sip of her coffee. She reflected on her experience, likening it to a delicate dance, an intricate interplay of curiosity and caution. Dr. Alex Turner, a seasoned observer of marine life in the area for many years, also joined the discussion. He provided insights into the often misunderstood nature of tiger sharks, highlighting their intelligence and wisdom. Lila's composed presence in the water had likely played a pivotal role in the encounter. The trio continued to discuss marine conservation, the importance of preserving habitats, and humans' role in the delicate ecosystem. Inspired by her experience and the knowledge shared by Carlos and Dr. Turner, Lila decided to use her platform to raise awareness about marine life and the importance of coexistence. The next day, as Lila prepared to leave New Smyrna Beach, she made one last trip to the coastline. Standing at the water's edge, she felt deeply connected to the vast ocean and its inhabitants. The tiger shark encounter had transformed her perspective, instilling a profound respect for the mysteries of the deep. Carlos, accompanying her, handed Lila a small pendant shaped like a shark's tooth as a memento of her encounter with the tiger of the sea. Lila expressed her thanks through a heartfelt hug, emphasizing that this wasn't their final meeting. She intended to return with a desire to explore the mysteries of this extraordinary place more deeply on her next visit. As she boarded her flight back to San Francisco, Lila looked out of the window, the coastline of New Smyrna Beach slowly fading from view. She clutched the shark tooth pendant, a constant reminder of her incredible journey and the lessons learned. The ocean with its vastness and depth held countless stories. Lila had experienced just one, but it was a story that would stay with her forever. A tale of respect, understanding, and the awe-inspiring dance with the Tiger of the Sea. In the tranquil haven of Crest Haven, where the cliffs stoically face the endless expanse of the sea, Emily Anderson, driven by an insatiable thirst for adventure, silently slipped away from the comforting embrace of her family. With a note left behind, expressing only the desire to explore the boundless beauty of the coastline, 
she set sail on a solo odyssey, her sailboat dancing upon the undulating waves. The year was 2010, and Crest Haven resonated with a harmonious blend of modernity and the timeless cadence of nature. As Emily's sailboat glided gracefully through the azure waters, her surroundings painted in hues of serenity, she reveled in the freedom of exploration. Unbeknownst to her, beneath the crystalline waves lurked a colossal shark, a primeval force that would soon rupture the tranquility of her solitary journey. Initially a tapestry of peace, the sea transformed into an unpredictable realm of danger as the colossal shark, drawn by the vibrations of her presence, circled Emily's small sailboat. In a sudden and ferocious attack, the sea erupted into chaos. The colossal shark, a behemoth from the ocean's ancient past, lunged at Emily's vessel with primal intent. Its razor-sharp teeth tore through the hull, leaving Emily defenseless against the relentless power of nature. During the struggle, Emily fought desperately to fend off the colossal predator. The once calm sea became a turbulent battlefield, her screams echoing across the waves as she grappled with the imminent threat to her life. Emily fought a desperate battle for survival. The once tranquil sea had become a turbulent battlefield, and with each passing moment, Emily's instincts kicked in with fierce tenacity. Gripped by fear and adrenaline, she summoned all her strength and resourcefulness to thwart the relentless onslaught. Driven by a primal instinct to protect herself, she seized any available objects to fend off the colossal predator. With a determination fueled by sheer survival, she wielded whatever she could lay her hands on. A boat hook, a makeshift barrier fashioned from spare materials on the sailboat. Anything to create a barrier between herself and the shark's razor-sharp teeth. In the face of impending peril, Emily's ingenuity and resilience came to the forefront as she navigated the precarious space between life and the ferocious jaws of the ancient force that had disrupted her solitary adventure. Once a canvas of serenity, the sea bore witness to this battle of survival, where the indomitable spirit of a lone adventurer clashed with the primal might of an apex predator lurking beneath the waves. Stained with the crimson hue of her wounds, it bore witness to the ferocity of the encounter, an unpredictable dance between a lone adventurer and the untamed forces that govern the depths. Back on the shores of Crest Haven, Emily's family discovered her note and grew increasingly concerned as the hours passed without her return. Sensing an urgency, they set out to find her, guided by the haunting echoes of her cries for help carried by the wind. The undulating waves led them to the tumultuous waters where Emily's sailboat struggled against the aftermath of the shark's attack. Panic seized the Andersons as they witnessed the harrowing scene unfold. Emily's father, Robert Anderson, a stoic patriarch, reached for the radio, a lifeline that connected them to the external world. Urgent pleas for assistance echoed through the airwaves, interweaving with the anguished cries of a family teetering on the precipice of tragedy. Responding to the distress call, a rescue team was galvanized into action, racing against the relentless clock to reach the battleground where humanity and the ancient force of the ocean collided. The colossal shark, continuing its circling dance around Emily's now damaged sailboat, remained an imposing adversary, an embodiment of nature's unyielding power. As the rescue team's vessel sliced through the waves, Crest Haven became a theater of a macabre spectacle, the colossal shark, a living relic of primordial power, engaged in a primal dance with the determined rescuers. The clash of harpoons and scales resonated, creating a symphony of human determination and nature's resilience in the maritime battleground. Despite Emily's tenacious spirit, the shark's attack had left her with severe wounds. The once tranquil sea turned into a frenetic battlefield, her small sailboat caught in the jaws of nature's relentless power. The shark, driven by primal instincts, circled her vessel, its colossal presence a stark reminder of the unpredictable forces that governed the depths. The battle waged on, Emily's family watching helplessly from the shoreline as the sea transformed into a pool of blood. Time slipped away as they clung to a dwindling hope. The colossal shark, a manifestation of untamed ferocity, eventually succumbed to the relentless assault of harpoons. Yet the victory proved hollow, the sea's storm having already claimed its toll. Emily, caught in the crossfire of nature's wrath and her family's desperate search, clung to life with resilience that defied the odds. 
As the tumultuous sea echoed with the aftermath of the shark's attack, Eleanor, Emily's mother, stood by her daughter's side, her eyes reflecting a mixture of fear and determination. With the rescue team subduing the shark, Michael, Emily's older brother, played a crucial role in providing emotional support to the distraught family. Meanwhile, Sophia, the youngest in the family, clung to the hope that their collective strength would see them through this ordeal. Together, they witnessed the unfolding chaos, their familial bonds tested by the merciless sea. The tumultuous events marked a turning point in the story, propelling the Andersons into a complex terrain of healing. As Emily's recovery progressed, the once vibrant vacation home transformed into a sanctuary of hope. Laughter, though tinged with the echoes of trauma, filled the air as the family, bound by love and resilience, visited Emily daily in the hospital. Emily's mother, who had faced the harrowing specter of nearly losing her daughter, now stood vigil by her bedside. The room, adorned with cards and well wishes from the community, became a testament to the indomitable spirit of a young woman who had defied the jaws of death. Once veiled in sorrow, Eleanor found solace in her daughter's slow but steady recovery. Her family supported her and organized a different gathering to celebrate life and resilience. Friends and neighbors, touched by the miraculous survival, expressed their relief and joy. The once heavy air of grief began to lift, replaced by a collective exhalation of gratitude for Emily's tenacity in the face of nature's ferocity. Dr. Isabella Turner, a marine biologist and friend of the family, became a beacon of understanding and compassion. Collaborating with medical experts, she studied Emily's case, unraveling the intricacies of the shark's behavior and the extraordinary circumstances that led to Emily's survival. The story, which had begun in tragedy, now unfolded as a testament to the resilience of the human spirit and the intricate dance between life and the untamed forces of nature. Emily's recovery became a symbol of hope for Crest Haven and beyond, her journey inspiring her community and reaching far beyond the confines of the town. As Emily's recovery progressed, the Anderson home transformed once again. Laughter, though tinged with the echoes of trauma, filled the air. The family, their bond strengthened by adversity, navigated the delicate balance between remembrance and renewal. The once vibrant vacation home, scarred by tragedy, now echoed with the sounds of a family reclaiming joy and life. Crest Haven witnessed a unique chapter in its history in the quiet aftermath of the ordeal, a tale of survival and rebirth. The news of Emily's encounter with the colossal shark, now a story of triumph, spread far and wide. Once drawn to the tragedy, the media now focused on the incredible journey of recovery and resilience. The Andersons, once symbols of grief, emerged as ambassadors of hope. Through her research and advocacy, Dr. Isabella Turner highlighted the need for understanding and coexistence with the untamed creatures of the sea. Crest Haven, forever changed by the ebb and flow of life's untamed forces, stood as a testament to the indomitable human spirit and the profound interconnectedness of all living beings. As the seasons cycled through their eternal dance, Emily and her family continued their journey a journey marked by loss, survival, and the enduring echoes of an encounter with a colossal shark. In the quiet moments between tides as the sun dipped below the horizon and the waves whispered their eternal lullaby, Crest Haven stood as a beacon of resilience, a town forever marked by the untamed forces that shaped the tapestry of life. The Andersons, their hearts forever imprinted with the indelible legacy of Emily's survival, navigated the tides of existence with a newfound appreciation for the fragile yet resilient beauty of the untamed world that surrounded them. In the coastal town of Mariner's Haven, where the rugged cliffs met the vast Pacific Ocean, Dr. Vivian Sterling, a renowned marine biologist and fearless documentary filmmaker, prepared for an expedition that would plunge her into the heart of a chilling wonder. Accompanied by her supportive family, her husband, Captain Alexander Sterling, and their adventurous daughter, Amelia. They set sail on the Abyss Explorer, a vessel that would carry them into the depths of the untamed ocean. The year was 2012, and the Sterling family had chosen the picturesque Mariner's Haven for their groundbreaking documentary on sharks. The small town, known for its pristine beaches and unique marine life, provided the perfect backdrop for their exploration. Armed with cutting-edge diving gear and state-of-the-art filming equipment, 
Dr. Sterling embarked on a solo dive into the abyss while her family watched from the boat's safety. Mariner's Haven had its beauty with its history steeped in maritime lore and the wonder that lay beneath its waves. With an unquenchable thirst for knowledge, Dr. Sterling descended into the ocean's depths, capturing the mesmerizing underwater world on film. The dive started smoothly with Dr. Sterling navigating the depths with expertise. She marveled at the diverse marine life showcasing the ocean's wonders. However, the tranquility was about to be shattered. In the depths of the abyss, a shadowy figure emerged, the ominous silhouette of a great white shark. Unbeknownst to Dr. Sterling, she had ventured into the territory of a particularly territorial and aggressive predator. The great white circled as she focused on her shots, sensing an intruder in its domain. Suddenly, with a burst of speed, the shark lunged towards Dr. Sterling, catching her off guard. The attack was swift and brutal, leaving her in shock and battling for her life as she fended off the relentless predator. Despite her best efforts, the shark's sudden attack left Dr. Sterling disoriented and injured, her once steady movements now impeded by the pain coursing through her body. In a desperate struggle for survival, she activated an emergency buoyancy device attached to her diving suit, propelling herself toward the surface with a burst of compressed air. The ascent, however, was agonizing, as each movement sent waves of pain through her wounded limbs. Gasping for breath, Dr. Sterling emerged from the depths, her face etched with determination and distress. Her husband, Captain Alexander, rushed to her aid, hauling her aboard with a mix of relief and concern. The encounter with the great white shark had taken a toll, physically and emotionally, pushing Dr. Sterling to the brink. As she lay on the deck, battered and bruised, the realization of the untamed and unpredictable nature of the ocean weighed heavily on her, fueling her resolve to comprehend the mysteries that lurked beneath its surface. In the aftermath of the harrowing encounter, Dr. Sterling faced a personal conflict. Grappling with the trauma of the attack and a determination to understand the untamed nature of the great white shark. Supported by her family, she vowed to return to the ocean depths, capture the elusive footage that had eluded her, and face the fearsome predator again. Dr. Sterling relentlessly pursued an understanding of white shark species, seeking the guidance of fellow marine biologists and shark experts. As she recuperated, the incident explored the complexities of nature and the fine line between fascination and danger. The incident was a poignant reflection on the wonders and dangers that lay beneath the abyss, forever untamed and unfathomable, as Dr. Sterling emerged from the depths with a newfound respect for the untamed forces of the ocean and a deeper bond with her family, united by the shared ordeal of the abyss. Melissa's colleagues at the marketing firm had often wondered if she was a machine. Her unparalleled work ethic, unrelenting passion, and unwavering commitment had earned her the reputation of being the hardest worker in the company. Her persistence and determination had finally paid off when she received a promotion, but it was not enough to keep her from feeling burnout. As the hustle and bustle of the city began to take its toll on her, Melissa craved an escape to a place where she could find solace and rejuvenation. She decided to take her whole family to the island of Maui in Hawaii, a place known for its idyllic beaches and tranquil waters. The idea of exploring the stunning coastline and indulging in water activities was enough to invigorate her soul. Melissa's family was a diverse and dynamic group, with each member having their own unique traits and personalities. Her parents, who had retired after years of hard work, were a happy couple, enjoying the peace and serenity that life after work provided. Melissa's younger brother, on the other hand, was a self-proclaimed daredevil, always seeking new adventures and taking risks that most would avoid. Her younger sister was the baby of the family, looking up to Melissa as an inspiration and role model. She was eager to follow in her big sister's footsteps, always watching her every move and admiring her accomplishments with an air of awe and wonder. Despite their differences, the family loved and supported each other ready to face any challenge that came their way. The island of Maui was a tropical haven that welcomed Melissa's family with open arms. The turquoise waters glimmered in the sunlight, and the white sandy beaches stretched for miles, inviting them to explore. The constant murmur of the waves crashing against the shore provided a soothing soundtrack to their adventures, 
while the soft sand tickled their toes. But beneath the idyllic scenery lay a world of danger, and it was only a matter of time before they would find themselves entangled in its grasp. As the sun began to set, Melissa and her family sat down at a beachside bar to enjoy a drink and soak up the island's ambiance. A friendly local overheard their conversation and offered a suggestion that would change their vacation forever. The local recommended that they explore the Molokini Crater, a dormant undersea volcanic crater. Intrigued, Melissa and her family eagerly inquired for more details about the location. The local described it as a magnificent wonder of nature, with an abundance of marine life and underwater caves waiting to be explored. As the group imagined themselves diving into the clear blue water of the crater, they felt a sense of excitement and apprehension. They had never attempted anything like this before, and the unknown dangers lurking beneath the surface added to the thrill. The idea of venturing into a crater formed by a volcano that had been active in the past made their hearts race. Despite their hesitation, they decided to take the plunge and embark on this new adventure. On the day of the dive, the family was bubbling with excitement as they strapped on their diving gear and jumped into the cool, clear water surrounding Bolokini Crater. The vibrant colors of the coral reef below were mesmerizing, and the family couldn't help but feel a sense of wonder and awe at the otherworldly beauty before them. Schools of brightly colored fish swam around them, while majestic sea turtles glided gracefully by. The eerie silence of the underwater world only added to the sense of mystery and adventure that Melissa and her family felt. But as they delved deeper into the crater, a feeling of unease began to settle in the pit of their stomachs. However, while swimming, Melissa noticed a group of large shadows lurking in the murky waters. Curious, she used her underwater flashlight to shine a light on the shadows. Melissa was petrified to see a pack of tiger sharks stalking the murky waters. In a panic, Melissa swam to the surface and alerted her whole family. The family were in a frenzy, thrashing relentlessly with their efforts to reach the safety of the waiting boat. The chaos caught the attention of the sharks. The pack of sharks swam towards the commotion. Realizing that there's prey in the water, the predators went on a feeding frenzy. The rest of the family were almost upon the boat, but Melissa was not so lucky. In a matter of seconds, she was surrounded and circled around by a pack of hungry tiger sharks. Melissa could see the fins of five sharks circling around her. She tried to swim away as fast as she could, but the sharks were faster. Suddenly, one of the predators lunged at her, biting Melissa's left leg. Melissa screamed in agony as she felt the shark's razor-sharp teeth tear her flesh. The water around them was crimson red with Melissa's blood mixing with the salt water. The smell of the blood in the water crazed the other sharks, who were overcome with their primal instincts and hunger. The other sharks started attacking Melissa, who was helpless against the might of the predatory beast of the sea. As the first shark latched on a Melissa's leg, tossing her around like a rag doll in the water. One shark latched onto Melissa's arm. Suddenly, in a bone-crunching bite, both sharks bit off Melissa's limbs. Melissa couldn't even scream, as another shark bit off her head. The sharks continued their harrowing attack. Some sharks began ripping the other limbs, while one bit on Melissa's torso, dragging her mangled, lifeless body to the depths of the ocean. Melissa's family could only watch in horror as this pack of tiger sharks ripped her apart. The Coast Guard responded to the distress call of the guide, but it was no use. After several days of search, no part of Melissa was found. Her family was left with the emotional scar of watching their beloved Melissa devoured by the primal predators of the sea. In the vibrant heart of New York City, where the hustle and bustle of urban life never seem to rest, lies an oasis of tranquility, the beach. On a bright weekend, Charlotte Brown, a spirited 69-year-old New Yorker, 
seized the opportunity to escape the city's chaos and embrace the soothing embrace of the ocean. Accompanied by three dear friends, the beach promised a respite from the daily grind, a chance to relive the carefree days of youth, and to make new memories that would linger long after the waves had receded. Upon arrival, the friends swiftly transformed into beachgoers, donning their vibrant bikinis and grabbing a colorful ball, symbolizing the playful day ahead. The salty breeze swept through their hair as they ventured into the shallow waters, their laughter resonating with the joy of childhood as they tossed the ball to one another. Amidst fits of giggles and splashes, the ocean became the backdrop to their joyous escapade. The friends, a symphony of youthful spirit and seasoned wisdom, reveled in each other's company, allowing the waves to wash away the world's worries. Yet, as the game's enthusiasm waned, two friends decided to retreat to the sun-kissed sands, seeking the comfort of beach chairs to watch the waves dance. Undeterred by fatigue, Charlotte and her remaining companion remained in the water, the cool embrace of the ocean soothing their spirits. The rhythmic waves became their companions, a reminder of the ever-flowing passage of time. The bond between friends, formed through shared memories and experiences, remained as strong as ever, unfazed by the years that had passed. For women, the act of being together is often synonymous with the sharing of stories and the warmth of conversation. And so, amidst the gentle ebb and flow of the waves, Charlotte and her friend began to talk. Their voices, carried by the ocean breeze, danced across the water as they recounted workdays from years gone by. The tales flowed seamlessly, vividly depicting a different era, filled with ambitions, challenges, and triumphs. The stories of yesteryears unraveled like a cherished tapestry, each thread weaving into the fabric of their friendship. Laughter punctuated their reminiscences, a testament to the resilience of their bond that had endured the tests of time. The tranquil day at the beach took an unexpected turn when fate intervened in the most chilling ways. Suddenly, a force jolted Charlotte's left leg, toppling her backward into the water. The world spun as a small tiger shark, its presence unbeknownst to her just moments earlier, clamped onto her left leg with relentless determination. The piercing pain gave way to a primal scream, a desperate cry that pierced the air and sent ripples of panic through her friends. Reacting with a blend of fear and determination, the friend closest to her sprang into action. The swift and instinctive response distracted the shark, diverting its attention long enough for Charlotte to escape its grip. The struggle in the water was fierce, a testament to the raw power of survival that surged through her veins. But Charlotte was not alone in her fight. Lifeguards, ever vigilant, rushed into the water to her rescue. Their arrival was a lifeline, a beacon of hope in a moment of chaos. Swiftly and skillfully, they whisked her to safety. The pain was excruciating as they carried her to the shore. The shark's grip had left a trail of destruction in its wake. The ordeal was far from over. Police officers on the scene ensure her immediate well-being. A tourniquet was applied to her leg, a desperate measure to stem the blood flow. In moments, the once idyllic beach had become a stage for a battle against time, as the forces of life and death waged their relentless struggle. The paramedics arrived swiftly. Their expertise and dedication was shown in their every move. Charlotte was rushed to a nearby hospital. The severity of her injuries was evident from the moment she arrived. The severe laceration to her rear left thigh area was wide. In the sterile confines of the hospital, doctors worked tirelessly to stabilize her. Their efforts focused on saving a life that had been hanging in the balance just moments before. Hours stretched into an eternity as medical professionals fought with determination and skill to piece Charlotte back together. As the hours turned into days, the tide of Charlotte's fate shifted. The efforts of the doctors, the support of her friends and family, and her unyielding spirit came together to turn the tide in her favor. Slowly but surely, her condition stabilized, the storm of chaos giving way to a fragile calm. The ordeal had left its mark, a scar on her leg that bore witness to the battle she had waged against the forces of nature. In the aftermath of the attack, the authorities swiftly closed the beach to swimming and surfing, a precaution to prevent further encounters with the unseen predators that lurked beneath the waves. Her body weakened as Charlotte emerged from the hospital, but her spirit was undaunted, the world looked different. Though she now limped due to the attack, her energy and determination remained unwavering. 
Charlotte had been given a second chance at life, a gift she did not take for granted. She carried on with her life, finding solace in the everyday moments. In the quaint coastal town of Eldoria, nestled between long cliffs and the vast expanse of the ocean, lived the Lawrence family Mark, the adventurous father, Sylvia, the nurturing mother, little Ethan, the curious young boy with a heart whole of dreams, and their eccentric Uncle Jasper, a weathered seafarer with tales to tell. One sunny weekend, the Lawrences decided to embark on a family fishing trip aboard their sturdy boat, the Sea Breeze Serenity. The year was 2009 and the promise of a bountiful catch shimmered on the horizon. As the boat cut through the gentle waves, laughter filled the air and the scent of salt water embraced the family. Ethan, filled with excitement, clutched his fishing rod, eager to try his luck in the deep blue. Little did he know that this serene family outing would soon morph into a harrowing experience that would forever etch itself into their memories. The azure waters held a silent predator lurking beneath the surface. Unbeknownst to the Lawrences, a formidable great white shark patrolled these waters, its hunger stirred by the scent of the sea and the promise of an easy meal. As Ethan cast his line into the ocean, the baited hook danced on the water's edge, tempting fate. Unseen by the family, the shark sensed an opportunity. The shark, a shadow in the depths, observed the shimmering fish on the line, its primal instincts urging it forward. Ethan's eyes widened with delight as he felt a mighty tug on his fishing rod. The excitement was contagious, drawing the attention of the entire family. The boat's deck buzzed with anticipation as Ethan wrestled with his catch, unaware of the lurking danger beneath. Suddenly the surface of the water erupted in a frenzy. The shark shot out of the depths with lightning speed, jaws snapping shut around the fish and Ethan's fishing rod. The Lawrence family gasped in horror as the shark's immense strength pulled Ethan toward the edge, threatening to consume him and the prized catch. Mark and Sylvia rushed to their son's aid in a frantic surge of adrenaline. Uncle Jasper, a veteran of the sea, bellowed instructions, his weathered face etched with concern. Mark dove into the water without hesitation, his hands reaching out to grasp Ethan, while Sylvia and Jasper desperately pulled on the fishing line. The struggle between man and beast unfolded beneath the surface. Enraged and hungry, the shark thrashed violently, determined to claim its prize. Fueled by parental instinct, Mark fought against the currents, his body a barrier between the shark and his son. With a burst of determination, Sylvia leaped into the water, joining the struggle to save her family. The sea breeze serenity rocked with the intensity of the ordeal. The once joyous atmosphere was now drowned in fear. As the family grappled with the forces of nature, Uncle Jasper devised a daring plan. Armed with a harpoon, he descended into the water, confronting Poseidon head-on. The battle of survival raged beneath the surface, each member of the Lawrence family playing their part in this maritime drama. In a pivotal moment, the shark relinquished its hold on the fishing rod, retreating into the depths. Mark, Sylvia, and Ethan resurfaced, their breaths ragged, faces marked by the ordeal. Uncle Jasper, a hero of the sea, emerged victorious, his harpoon raised in triumph. Back on the sea breeze serenity, the Lawrence family, battered but alive, clung to each other, the taste of victory mingling with the salt on their lips. Initially filled with joy, the fishing trip had become an unforgettable test of resilience and familial bonds. As the family sailed back to the safety of Eldoria's harbor, the Lawrence family faced the daunting task of attending to Ethan's injuries. An air of urgency and concern replaced the once jovial atmosphere on board. Mark, a beacon of strength, cradled Ethan in his arms, assessing the extent of the trauma wrought by the harrowing encounter. Uncle Jasper, still clutching the victorious harpoon, shifted seamlessly from the role of a maritime warrior to that of a seasoned medic. With weathered hands and a calm demeanor, he directed Sylvia to gather supplies from the boat's first aid kit. The gentle rocking of the boat mirrored the ebb and flow of the family's emotions as they grappled with the aftermath of their ordeal. As the Lawrence family huddled around Ethan, the rhythmic clapping of the waves served as a backdrop to their collective efforts. Sylvia, a nurturing force, skillfully cleaned and dressed Ethan's wounds with a mother's touch, her movements deliberate and soothing. With a wealth of maritime wisdom, Uncle Jasper offered insights into treating injuries, 
sustained in the unpredictable dance with the predator. Still bearing the physical toll of the struggle, Mark maintained a stoic demeanor, masking his concern for his son. Though visibly shaken, little Ethan found solace in the warmth of his family's care. The first aid administered on board the boat became a pivotal moment, a bridge between the untamed encounter and the return to the shores of Eldoria. The Lawrence family, eternally connected by the threads of survival, would forever be the guardians of their untamed story, a narrative of resilience, courage, and the unpredictable dance between man and the wild. The Lawrence family reveled in the simplicity of the moment. The gentle hum of the boat's engine melded with the laughter echoing across the open sea. The sun, a radiant orb, cast a golden glow over the water as if nature endorsed their maritime adventure. As the boat glided into the Eldoria Harbor, the Lawrence family, bonded by the shared triumph and tribulation, disembarked with Ethan held protectively in Mark's arms. Eldoria, with its cliffs standing sentinel, welcomed the survivors back to solid ground. The town's medical facilities became the next chapter in Ethan's journey to recovery. The local doctor, a familiar face in Eldoria, continued the meticulous work that had begun on the boat. The Lawrence family, still echoing the tales of their maritime odyssey, surrounded Ethan in a circle of support. The first aid administered in the aftermath of the shark's ambush not only tended to physical wounds, but also became a symbolic gesture of familial resilience. Eldoria, with its cobblestone streets and salty breeze, bore witness to the Lawrence family's indomitable spirit as they faced the untamed, weathered the storm, and emerged stronger on the other side. The ocean, serene and beautiful, held both wonder and danger. The untamed depths had revealed their wonders, and the Lawrences, forever changed, carried the weight of that fateful encounter. In the aftermath, the Lawrence family became local legends. Their tale is passed down as a cautionary yet inspiring story. Eldoria, a town bound to the sea, would forever remember the day when the untamed ocean unleashed its fury and a family stood united against the jaws of peril. With its azure waters and golden sands, Maui, Hawaii was a surfer's dream. The island's reputation for having some of the best waves in the world drew Jake Thompson, a young surfer from Colorado, to its shores. With a passion for the sport and a thirst for adventure, Jake had traveled to Maui to experience the thrill of surfing in the renowned Honolulu Bay. The first rays of dawn broke as Jake arrived at the bay. The beach was deserted, giving him a sense of solitude and serenity. He took a moment to admire the beauty around him, the rhythmic sound of the waves acting as nature's soundtrack. Wasting no time, Jake waxed his board and headed into the water. The waves were perfect, each one offering a new challenge. As he rode wave after wave, the adrenaline rush was unparalleled. The world outside ceased to exist. It was just Jake, his board, and the mighty ocean. As the morning sun climbed, Jake ventured further out, seeking bigger waves. The deeper waters were enticing, and soon, he found himself in an area of the bay he hadn't explored before. The waves here were larger, more unpredictable, but Jake was undeterred. However, as he waited for the next big wave, he felt a sudden shift in the water beneath him. Glancing down, he saw a shadow moving, its striped pattern unmistakable. A tiger shark, and from its size it appeared to be a mature one, was swimming just below him. Jake's heart raced. He was in the middle of the bay, far from the safety of the shore. He knew he had to remain calm. Any sudden movement could attract the shark's attention. Holding his breath, he paddled slowly, trying to distance himself from the shark. But the tiger shark seemed intrigued. It began to circle Jake, its dorsal fin occasionally breaking the water's surface. Jake remembered reading about tiger sharks and their curious nature. He decided to try a tactic he had read about laying flat on his board, trying to make as little movement as possible, hoping the shark would lose interest. Minutes felt like hours. The shark continued its circling, coming closer with each pass. Jake knew he had to do something. Spotting a buoy in the distance, he decided to break for it. He paddled towards the buoy using all his strength, hoping to use it as a barrier between him and the shark. As he neared the buoy, the shark lunged, its jaws snapping just inches from Jake's foot. The close encounter was terrifying, but it gave Jake a burst of adrenaline. He reached the buoy and clung to it, using it as a shield. 
The tiger shark drifted away, perhaps frustrated or sensing that Jake was no longer an easy target. Jake, exhausted and shaken, took this opportunity to make his way back to the shore. Reaching the safety of the beach, Jake collapsed on the sand, his heart still racing from the ordeal. He had come to Maui seeking adventure, and the island had undoubtedly delivered. But this was one adventure he had yet to anticipate. Days turned into weeks, and Jake's terrifying encounter with the tiger shark became a memory, albeit a vivid one. The allure of the waves was too strong to resist, and Jake found himself drawn back to the waters of Honolulu Bay. This time, however, he was better prepared. He had invested in shark deterrent technology, which emitted electromagnetic fields to repel sharks. With this added layer of protection, Jake felt more confident venturing into the deeper parts of the bay. One morning, with the sun casting a golden hue over the water, Jake paddled out. The waves were even more spectacular than he remembered, and he lost himself in the thrill of surfing. As he rode wave after wave, the world's worries faded, replaced by the sheer joy of being one with the ocean. During a lull between sets, Jake noticed something in the water. A pod of dolphins was playfully swimming nearby, their graceful movements a sight to behold. Jake watched in awe as they leaped out of the water, their silhouettes framed against the morning sun. It was a reminder of the beauty and wonder of the marine world. As Jake continued to surf, he was joined by a group of sea turtles. They seemed curious, occasionally popping their heads out of the water to get a closer look at him. Feeling connected with these gentle creatures, Jake decided to take a break from surfing and snorkel alongside them. Diving beneath the waves, Jake was greeted by a vibrant underwater world. Colorful fish darted around and corals swayed with the current. The sea turtles, seemingly unperturbed by his presence, allowed him to swim close, and Jake marveled at the intricate patterns on their shells. As he explored the underwater realm, Jake stumbled upon a hidden cove. Nestled within was a shipwreck, its time-worn structure now home to many marine life. Schools of fish swam in and out of the ship's crevices, and Jake even spotted a moray eel peeking out from a porthole. Feeling a sense of peace and contentment, Jake made his way back to the surface. The encounter with the tiger shark had taught him to respect the ocean and its inhabitants, and the importance of coexisting with nature. As the day drew closer, Jake sat on the beach, reflecting on his experiences. The ocean, with its vastness and mysteries, had given him both a scare and a sense of wonder. He realized that every encounter, whether thrilling or serene, was a gift, a chance to connect with the world profoundly. With a heart full of gratitude, Jake packed up his gear and headed home, the memories of his time in Maui forever etched in his soul. In the sun-kissed summer of 2005, the picturesque coastal town of Harbor Haven, nestled between rolling hills and the expansive ocean, eagerly anticipated the annual beach volleyball tournament. The event was a radiant tapestry of sunlit days, the sound of waves crashing against the shore, and the palpable excitement that enveloped the community. Cassandra Donovan, a spirited teenager with a cascade of brown curls, stood out among the participants. Her prowess on the sandy courts, a dazzling blend of agility and power, made her a rising star in the local sports scene. As the tournament reached its zenith, Cassandra's team was on the brink of triumph, and the entire town watched in awe. Amid the pulsating energy of the tournament, Cassandra, yearning for a brief respite, ventured towards the azure waters that embraced the sandy shoreline. The sun, casting a golden glow upon the beach, painted the scene with an ethereal beauty. Little did Cassandra know, a massive force stirred beneath the surface, a shark lurking in the fathomless depths. The attack when it came shattered the idyllic ambiance. Cassandra's laughter, a joyous melody just moments ago, transformed into a heart-rending scream as a colossal shadow emerged. Initially reveling in the spirited competition, the spectators were thrust into a collective nightmare as the ocean claimed its unsuspecting victim. The beach became a canvas of chaos. Panic swept through the onlookers. Gasps of horror replaced their carefree cheers. The once tranquil waves now harbored a primal struggle as Cassandra fought desperately against the jaws of the lurking predator, a silent dance unfolding beneath the surface. On the shore, chaos reigned. 
panic-stricken beachgoers fumbled with phones, calling for help. The urgency of their pleas blending with the distant roars of the ocean. During the turmoil, a group of seasoned divers emerged, a brotherhood forged by the sea's ebb and flow, bound by a duty to protect their community from the ancient menace that lurked in the depths. These divers, weathered by countless tides and acquainted with the unpredictable temperament of the ocean, wasted no time. Synchronized like a well-practiced ballet, their movements became a beacon of hope amidst the turmoil. Armed with nets and unwavering determination, they descended into the watery abyss, the unknown dangers hidden beneath the surface failing to deter their mission. The underwater battle unfolded like a silent opera, the divers confronting a shadow that had haunted these waters for generations. The shark, an embodiment of primal power, fought fiercely against its captors. It was a struggle transcending the physical, a clash of survival instincts echoing through the ancient depths. In a moment that seemed to stretch into eternity, the divers managed to entangle the creature in a web of nets. Victory, however, came at a price. Battered and bruised, Cassandra emerged from the water, a living testament to the relentless struggle beneath the waves. The once joyous beach volleyball tournament now stood in somber silence, the atmosphere heavy with shock and disbelief. On her way to the hospital, Cassandra became a symbol of resilience and the fragility of human existence. The news of the incident had spread through the town, whispers of the harrowing encounter reaching every corner. What was once a joyous event now cast a shadow over Harbor Haven, a collective scar etched into the town's memory. As the chaotic events unfolded on the beach, Cassandra's family, who had been enthusiastic spectators of the tournament, were suddenly thrust into a state of shock and dismay. Witnessing their daughter's harrowing ordeal, they rushed to the water's edge, their faces contorted with fear and disbelief. The shock lingered as Cassandra, entangled in the jaws of the predator, was finally rescued by the courageous divers. With the urgency of a united front, her family accompanied her to the hospital, their steps heavy with concern. In the car, the atmosphere was tense and the sad ride mirrored the town's collective sentiment. The once joyful family outing is now marked by a surreal and unforeseen calamity that left them grappling with the fragility of life. In the hospital room, Cassandra fought not only for her physical recovery, but also for the restoration of the town's spirit. The once quiet community now rallied behind her, transforming the hospital into a sanctuary of hope and camaraderie. Days turned into weeks, marked by Cassandra's unwavering determination to reclaim her life. Physical therapy sessions became a testament to her indomitable spirit, a journey that resonated with every resident of Harbor Haven. Once a shadow over the town, the incident became a source of inspiration, a beacon of resilience that united the community in a shared narrative of triumph over adversity. Harbor Haven, known for its serene beauty, found a new identity, a town united by the shared memory of a day when the ocean roared in defiance. Cassandra's return to the beach volleyball scene was not just any sporting event, but a celebration of resilience, a testament to the human spirit's ability to emerge victorious from the silent depths. The once quiet town, forever changed by the incident, became a beacon of strength, Cassandra's story, etched into the annals of Harbor Haven's history, resonated with every resident, young and old. Once a source of fear, the ocean now whispered the tale of a courageous young athlete who faced the shadows and emerged triumphant. The beach volleyball tournament resumed in the aftermath but was no longer just a sporting event. It became an annual reminder of Harbor Haven's resilience, a celebration of unity, and a testament to the indomitable spirit that could rise from the abyss. Once shaken to its core, the town emerged stronger, connected by a story that transcended more and more, a story of bravery against the shadows. Lagoon's Edge, a coastal village, was a canvas of tranquility and natural beauty in the summer of 2005. The village, with its charming cobblestone pathways and houses adorned in soft pastel hues, was a sanctuary for those seeking solace in nature's lap. The expansive, gleaming lagoon, which seamlessly kissed the sea, was the jewel of this quaint village. Legends whispered of hidden treasures and mystical creatures beneath its azure surface. The Carter family, consisting of Robert Carter, a seasoned journalist, his wife Lydia, a celebrated photographer, and their spirited 12-year-old daughter Sophie, 
sought a summer of adventure and inspiration at Lagoon's Edge. They nestled into a cozy cottage that offered a panoramic view of the lagoon, hoping the serene environment would spark their creative energies. One sun-drenched morning, the Carters, along with a few intrigued villagers, embarked on a boat expedition to explore the hidden alcoves of the lagoon. Lagoon's Whisper, captained by the seasoned Captain Elias, whose lineage was deeply intertwined with the village's history, sailed smoothly over the gentle waves. With his weathered face and twinkling eyes, Elias recounted stories of pirates, ancient shipwrecks, and the mythical guardians of the lagoon. Sophie's adventurous spirit was captivated by the legend of Mermaid's Cove, a secluded spot celebrated for its crystal-clear waters, and rumored to be a favored haunt for mermaids. Elias, his smile filled with knowing, expertly guided the boat toward the cove. Upon reaching Mermaid's Cove, the group was mesmerized by its ethereal beauty and couldn't resist diving into the inviting waters. Sophie, fearless and curious, swam deeper into the cove, enchanted by the vibrant marine life. Suddenly, the tranquility was shattered by the appearance of dark, swift-moving shadows. A pack of sharks encircled Sophie, their piercing eyes locked onto her and their intentions ominously clear. Her heart pounded as she tried to maintain a semblance of calm, floating motionless in the water. Surrounded by the unforgiving depths of the ocean, Sophie found herself in the midst of a heart-stopping moment as a pack of sharks descended upon her. Sensing an opportunity, the powerful predators closed in, their dorsal fins slicing through the water's surface with a sinister grace. Sophie's heart pounded like a drumbeat, her every instinct screaming for her to flee. As she desperately tried to move towards the boat, the sharks moved in closer, their cold black eyes fixed on her. One of them lunged, teeth bared, and Sophie felt the rush of terror course through her veins as the shark's jaws snapped shut just inches from her leg. But before the other sharks could inflict further harm, a pair of saviors emerged from the boat. Captain Elias and Robert, driven by remarkable swiftness and courage, thrust at the attacking sharks with a makeshift spear, repelling them with precise, calculated jabs. The pack of sharks, momentarily thrown off balance by the sudden turn of events, retreated, their hunt disrupted. There was no time to spare in the aftermath of the heart-stopping shark encounter. With Sophie's life hanging in the balance, they acted swiftly, rushing her back to the safety of the boat. The adrenaline-fueled race against time continued as they sped toward the shore and called for an emergency medical team. At the hospital, the dedicated medical staff worked tirelessly to stabilize Sophie. She bore the physical scars of the attack, but her spirit remained unbroken. Days turned into weeks as she underwent surgeries and received round-the-clock care. Gradually, with each passing day, Sophie's strength returned. Her indomitable willpower carried her through a challenging recovery, aided by the unwavering support of her family and the ever-present Robert, who refused to leave her side. It was a testament to her resilience that she not only survived the vicious shark attack, but also emerged from it stronger and more determined than ever before. As Sophie's health improved, the Carters and their guides couldn't help but reflect on the fateful day. It had been a difficult journey, one that had tested their courage and forged unbreakable bonds. The memory of the shark encounter would forever remain etched in their minds as a testament to the power of human determination and the strength of the human spirit. Embarking on a vacation is often a thrilling prospect, but for 22-year-old Michelle Roy, it was a mixture of excitement and trepidation. As an avid snorkeling lover, the allure of exploring the underwater world held an irresistible charm. However, Michelle's fear of the dangers lurking beneath the water's surface kept her from fully indulging in her passion in America. With the opportunity to travel alongside her parents, Michelle saw a chance to combine family bonding with her deep-seated desire for adventure. A meticulous planner, she embarked on a comprehensive research journey to identify the safest and most breathtaking destination for their family vacation. Michelle's investigation led her to the azure beauty of the Bahamas. The archipelago's turquoise waters, teeming with vibrant marine life, promise an enchanting experience for any snorkeling enthusiast. Her persuasive skills matched her passion, and the Bahamas quickly became her destination of choice. Roy, 58, his wife Laura, Michelle, and her twin brother Michael boarded a flight from Las Vegas to the Bahamas, 
eager to immerse themselves in the pleasures the turquoise waters and pristine beaches had to offer. Upon arriving and settling into their lodge, their Bahamian adventure began with an enthusiasm that matched their anticipation. Arriving in the Bahamas, the anticipation in the air was palpable. With the Caribbean Sea stretching out around it, the Bahamas is a veritable haven for water enthusiasts. Its crystal clear waters promise a paradise for swimming, scuba diving, and snorkeling. Their first port of call was a local restaurant where they indulged in the native delicacies the island nation had to offer. The flavors of the Bahamas danced on their taste buds, a compelling precursor to the aquatic wonders that awaited them. As the sun hung high in the sky, the family felt an irresistible pull toward the crystalline water surrounding them. However, Roy, the patriarch, suggested they spend their first day resting at the hotel and reserve their grand aquatic adventures for the following day. The next day's dawn found Michelle and her twin brother Michael bubbling over with excitement. Having prepared their snorkeling gear, the duo quickly gathered their equipment and went to the beach. The family's adventures were far from over. With a sense of exhilaration, they embarked on a boat excursion to the nearby island of Nassau. Laughter and camaraderie filled the air as they joined other tourists on the boat. Arriving at Nassau, they were greeted by the island's charm, where locals and tourists converged to share in its delights. In the company of fellow travelers, they indulged in a mini picnic that the locals had organized. For Michelle, the promise of adventure beneath the turquoise surface was irresistible. The day's excitement had reached its crescendo as she swiftly finished her meal, eager to don her snorkeling gear and immerse herself in the aquatic wonders that awaited her. Her twin brother Michael was lost in conversation, delaying his preparations. Unperturbed, Michelle ventured into the water alone, the coolness embracing her skin like a lover's touch. The water's gentle embrace lured Michelle further into its depths with each step. The underwater world unfurled before her like an enchanting tapestry its vivid colors and intricate beauty captivating her senses. As she delved deeper, she closed her eyes, allowing the symphony of nature's rhythm to envelop her. Unknown to her, an ominous presence lurked beneath the surface. Three sharks, silent predators of the deep, were closing in on the area. Their predatory instincts honed in on the lone swimmer. But Michelle was lost in her reverie, unaware of the imminent danger rapidly approaching. Meanwhile, Roy, seated comfortably on a picnic mat, relished the cool sea breeze that danced through his hair. His gaze shifted toward the water and his heart skipped a beat as he caught sight of the gills gliding ominously through the waves. Panic surged through him, and he urgently called out to Laura, who was equally taken aback. They exchanged concerned glances, knowing that Michelle was in the water, yet completely unaware of the area's lurking dangers. Frantic shouts of Michelle's name pierced the air their urgency echoing over the waves. But Michelle, lost in her underwater reverie, remained oblivious to the desperate calls for her attention. The scene unfolded was a horrifying collision of paradise and peril as the three sharks circled and descended upon her with terrifying precision. Michelle's peaceful aquatic exploration was shattered as the pack of sharks overwhelmed her. She fought valiantly against her attacker's immense strength and ferocity, but the odds were stacked against her. Before others could intervene, the damage was done. Michelle emerged from the water, her body bearing the brutal marks of the vicious attack. Her right arm had been torn from her body, a stark testimony to the shark's formidable power. Bites marred her other arm and both legs, leaving an indelible imprint of the horror that had unfolded beneath the waves. The shore that was once a threshold to paradise had now become the site of tragedy. Michelle's lifeless body was carried ashore. The waves now carrying a tale of heartbreak and loss. Rushed to the hospital, every effort was made to save her, but it was too late. Michelle was pronounced dead on arrival. The shock of the loss was like a tidal wave crashing upon her family. Upon hearing the devastating news, Laura fainted, unable to comprehend the swift and agonizing end that had befallen her child. Heavy with grief and disbelief, Roy lamented the cruel twist of fate that had extinguished the light of his daughter's life. Her absence was felt by her family and the island that had become the backdrop of her final moments. In the wake of Michelle's tragic death, the island mourned a loss it had never experienced. The first fatal shark attack had left an indelible mark on the tranquil shores, forever altering the perception of safety that had once enveloped the paradise. Faced with the unbearable weight of grief, 
Michelle's family made a painful decision to leave the island that had turned from a haven of adventure to a graveyard of dreams. Azure Bay, nestled on the eastern coast, was a picturesque haven. Golden sands, turquoise waters, and a town rich in tales of sailors and treasures set the backdrop for the Thompson family's summer vacation in 1998. The family, David Thompson, a marine biologist, his wife Clara, a schoolteacher, and their children, 16-year-old Emily and 8-year-old Max, were eager to explore. On their third day, they decided to rent a boat and venture into the deeper waters of the bay. David shared captivating stories about the diverse marine life that inhabited these waters, but he also cautioned them about the occasional sightings of sharks in the area. By noon, they anchored near a vibrant coral reef. As the family snorkeled, Emily, drawn by the allure of the deep, swam farther from the boat. The underwater world was mesmerizing. Colorful corals, darting fish, and the play of light through the water. But this beauty was soon overshadowed by a looming threat. A shadow passed over Emily, and she froze. Circling her were multiple sleek gray forms, sharks. The typically serene inhabitants of Azure Bay appeared unusually agitated. Recalling her father's advice, Emily made an effort to stay composed, refraining from sudden movements. Nevertheless, the sharks continued to grow bolder, inching closer. On the boat, Max's scream alerted the others. David scanned the waters, his heart sinking as he spotted the sharks around Emily. Clara clutched Max, her face pale, watching the scene unfold with dread. Emily, trying to control her rising panic, remembered a documentary she'd watched with her father. She began to slowly and deliberately tread water, making herself appear larger, hoping to deter the curious sharks. But one, larger than the rest, began to approach her directly, its intent clear. David, without hesitation, dove into the water, swimming with powerful strokes towards his daughter. David kept Emily close to him, making sure they presented themselves as a single, larger entity in the water. Sharks are more likely to be cautious when approaching larger prey. David also maintained unbroken eye contact with any sharks in the vicinity, signaling to them that he was fully aware of their presence. In response, the large shark, momentarily distracted, veered off course, although the others continued circling. The sun's rays, filtering through the water, created a surreal atmosphere as father and daughter found themselves in a standoff with the pack of sharks. Every movement, every breath was crucial. The tension in the water was palpable. David remembered a technique he'd learned during his marine studies as he tried to form a plan. He began to splash and create commotion, drawing the sharks' attention to him and away from Emily. The gamble was risky, but it was their best chance. Emily seized the opportunity, swimming with all her might towards the boat. Clara, seeing her approach, reached out, pulling her aboard. But David was still in the water, leading the sharks away. The family's ordeal was far from over, and as the boat's engine roared to life, the true test of their courage and unity was just beginning. As Emily struggled onto the boat, gasping for breath, Clara enveloped her in a tight, tearful embrace. Max clung to his sister's side, his young eyes filled with a blend of fear and relief. However, their reunion was fleeting as David remained in the water, intentionally drawing the attention of the sharks with his diversionary tactics. The boat's engine roared to life as Clara steered it closer to David, trying to create a barrier between him and the sharks. The large shark, seemingly the leader, was relentless, tailing David with a predatory focus. The azure waters of the bay, usually a symbol of tranquility, now churned with tension and danger. Using his knowledge of marine behavior, David dove deeper, then suddenly changed direction, trying to confuse the predators. He reached into his pocket, pulling out a small device he always carried, a sonic repeller. Designed to emit frequencies unpleasant to sharks, it was his last hope. Upon activating the device, a piercing, high-pitched sound resonated through the water. The sharks, disoriented by the unexpected noise, started to scatter in different directions. Seizing the moment, David swam upwards, breaking the surface and gasping for air. Clara, with Max's help, extended an oar towards him. Grasping it firmly, David was pulled aboard, exhausted but alive. The family huddled together, the boat speeding back to the safety of the shore. The azure horizon, which had promised a day of adventure and exploration, now bore witness to their harrowing ordeal. Back on the sandy shores of Azure Bay, the Thompsons were met with a crowd of locals and tourists, 
having been alerted by the flare David had fired earlier. The local lifeguard team and some fishermen approached, offering blankets and warm drinks. The family's vacation had taken an unexpected turn, but it also brought them closer than ever. They realized the strength of their bond and the lengths they would go to protect one another. As their vacation came to an end, the Thompsons left Azure Bay with mixed emotions. The beauty of the place was undeniable, but the memories of that fateful day would forever be etched in their minds. Years later, Emily, inspired by her father and their shared experience, became a marine biologist herself. She returned to Azure Bay, dedicating her life to studying sharks and advocating for their conservation. Through her efforts, the town established a marine sanctuary, ensuring that future generations could experience the wonders of the bay safely. The story of the Thompsons' encounter with the sharks became a legend in Azure Bay. It served as a reminder of the unpredictable nature of the sea and the importance of respecting its inhabitants. But above all, it was a testament to the indomitable human spirit and the bonds of family. And so, as the sun set on the horizon, casting a golden glow over the tranquil waters of Azure Bay, the legacy of the Thompson family lived on, a beacon of hope and unity in the face of adversity.